Let us see the next option which is smooth mesh. As we have already discussed, original mesh created by Octree is of very poor quality. So mesh smoothening is used to improve this quality. Smooth mesh option is present in the Octree option tab. This is where we have to tick in order to activate smooth mesh or mesh smoothening. This option is also available in edit mesh tab and it is convenient to use after volume mesh is computed. Nevertheless, we will discuss it here as same knowledge can be applied later. Now there are various inputs within the mesh smoothening option as well. First is iteration. It specifies how many times smoothening operation is to be performed. We do not specify large value as it will consume more time and after certain limit mesh quality cannot be improved. Generally 5 iterations are sufficient for smoothening mesh to its limit. Second is minimum quality. Elements which are of quality less than set limit will be selected for smoothening. It is always better to set the limit low and then gradually increase it. Set it to 0.4 for normal purposes. Now you can see the effect of mesh smoothening. It is visible in this figure smoothening has improved mesh quality from 0.01 to 0.25. This is the initial mesh and this is after smoothening. Next option is coarsen mesh. Cell count of mesh directly affects simulation time so it is crucial to reduce cell count as much as possible. For example mesh in the interior region away from wall can be coarse. This particular option does this by merging elements together. Limit of coarsening is set by aspect ratio as merging elements together will increase their aspect ratio. The first input that is required for coarse mesh option is iteration. It specifies how many times coarsening operation is to be performed. Second input is worst aspect ratio. Elements which have aspect ratio above the specified limit can be selected for coarsening process. This ensures that only good quality elements will be selected for coarsening as this operation reduces the quality of mesh. Using the coarsening operation cell count of this particular mesh is reduced from 0.5 to 0.25. This is the initial mesh and this is after mesh coarsening. We will quickly discuss the remaining options. First among them is fix non-manifold vertices. When we enable this option ICM will try to fix non-manifold vertices. Second is close gap. This option closes gap in surface mesh between different material points. Fix hole is another option in which ICM will try to fix holes to create watertight geometries. These options are not very important and they don't have much effect on mesh creation but it is always better to know their function. These options can be found here at the bottom. Generally fix non-manifold vertices and fix hole these two options are enabled. Now the next is use active local coordinate system. We have already discussed mechanisms of octree meshing. Octree divides the mesh along the coordinates axis which creates mesh element aligned to axis. If geometry is aligned along axis it produces good mesh but if geometry is not aligned to axis quality of mesh reduces. This can be handled by this option which provides us with an option of aligning the mesh along the local coordinate system. This will be more clear when we discuss the example in the figure. Now in figure 1 given geometry is not aligned along axis. In this particular second figure, robust octree mesh is created, has elements al aligned along the axis so quality of mesh produced is bad. Now we create local coordinate system which is aligned along the geometry as shown. We set this newly created coordinate system to be active. When we tick on this use active local coordinate system, it creates mesh as shown in figure which is aligned along the geometry. Let us see in detail the quick Delaunay method. Before that we will see how to change different meshing methods. For that we have to go to mesh, then global mesh setup, then click on volume meshing parameters icon. After that we select the mesh type. And once we select the mesh type we have to select the mesh method. This is where we can select the quick Delaunay method. Delaunay algorithm requires existing surface mesh to grow volume elements. New node will be placed such that centroid of any tetra is outside circumsphere of any neighboring tetra. Delaunay method is quick than octree method. Major advantage of quick Delaunay over the octree is smoother transition between the elements. Delaunay requires the existing surface mesh to create volume mesh. 
If it does not already exist, it will be created using surface mesh method selected in global mesh setup. As an example, in this particular figure at the top, we can see that the meshing is done using the octree method. Whereas in the bottom geometry, the meshing is done using the quick delaunay method. Volume mesh created using quick delaunay is smoother and has less cell count than compared to the robust octree scheme. Now we'll discuss the options that are available or the inputs that are required for the quick delaunay scheme. ICM gives user to choose from two different Delaunay schemes. First is standard and the other is T-grid. Both the schemes are based on skewness based refinement. Standard scheme is developed by ICM and it is an older algorithm. It is not used that often nowadays. The T-grid scheme actually comes from the T-grid software which is the dedicated meshing software. It produces good quality of mesh with less cell count than standard Delaunay algorithm. T-grid scheme is recommended over standard scheme. T-grid algorithm will be ignored while creating hexa-core mesh in Delaunay. Next is the use AF option or the advancing front option. It is a tick mark option that comes here below the different scheme type. Advancing front is another dedicated meshing algorithm which creates volume mesh from surface mesh by volume elements in layers. This produces gradual transition between mesh elements. Delaunay uses some features of this algorithm to produce smooth transition which is not possible otherwise. Now it should be noted here that it is always recommended to use T-grid with use AF enabled while creating mesh using quick scheme. As an example, this is the standard scheme. This particular geometry is meshed using standard scheme and the below is the T-grid scheme. And if we use AF, this is how the T-grid scheme changes or the mesh changes. And when we use AF along with the T-grid scheme, this is how we get a much smoother and a much better quality mesh. In this, uh, now we will continue to discuss different inputs that are required for the quick Delaunay scheme. First is the memory scaling factor, which is to be given here as a value input. Next is scaling spacing factor, which is again a value input which is to be specified here. And then there are tick inputs like fill holes in volume mesh, mesh internal domains, flood fill after completion and verbose output. We will discuss all the important inputs here in this slide. First is the memory scaling factor. Memory allocated for mesh creation is decided based on the surface mesh size. If meshing process fails due to shortage of memory, then meshing process restarts after doubling the allocated memory. And this will be done thrice before meshing process is terminated permanently. That is, in total 8 times memory is allocated than previously calculated before process is terminated. Still after this if meshing fails due to insufficient memory allocation, then user can increase memory scaling factor so that more memory can be allocated and meshing can proceed. For this we give the memory scaling factor. Next is the spacing scaling factor. Smooth transition in mesh means that element size does not change quickly. This results in mesh which has large cell count. ISM gives user control over this growth ratio. Two small ratios will increase the cell count and two large ratios will create mesh that is not suitable for CFD analysis. So in general, it is recommended that we keep this spacing scaling factor below 1.2. If we increase it above 1.5, there are chances that the case may not converge properly. It is recommended to use spacing scaling factor of 1.2. If this is not feasible, then only the maximum value of 1.5 can be used. This particular geometry is meshed using scaling, spacing scaling factor 1.2. This is after spacing scaling factor 1.5. And then you can notice that when we are using spacing scaling factor 2, this is a highly variant mesh or a highly skewed mesh that is created. So it is always recommended to use around 1.2 spacing scaling factor to get a better quality mesh. Next option that we, are, we will discuss is, is the fill holes in volume mesh input. This is a tick mark option, fill holes in volume mesh in the lower section of the panel. This option is used to fill holes in the volume mesh without affecting the existing mesh. Holes can be created due to incomplete meshing process or holes can result because of incomplete meshing process or sometimes region containing poor mesh quality elements can be deleted and remeshed using this option to improve the volume mesh quality. 